engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey guys, welcome back to Rocket Science. In this episode, we are going to cover everything regarding input lag, FPS and monitor refresh rate. On the Rocket League subreddit, I've seen a lot of misinformation about input lag. Many claim that they have no input lag at all. While you may not notice any input lag, there is always some. Input lag is the time delta between pressing a button and the action appearing on screen. There are a lot of factors that play into how long this time is. First, there is the input device. USB and wireless devices get pulled a number of times a second and each time they report back which buttons are pressed. Some devices pull at a rate of 100Hz, which means it could take up to 10 milliseconds for the next pull to happen after you've pressed the button. Wireless options may introduce a bit more input lag on top of that, but that's hardly significant these days. Then the game has to process your key presses and calculate what happens in the next frame. This includes things like how far your car turns or the board's flight path. Once that data is available, the graphics card can start working on actually rendering the image that is going to get displayed on your screen. At constant 60 FPS, this takes 17 milliseconds. Turning on VSync will add another whole frame of input lag and will also limit your FPS to your monitor's refresh rate. Once the frame is rendered, it will be sent to the monitor. How long it takes to transmit the whole image depends on your refresh rate. The monitor adds two extra layers of input lag. Pixel response time, which is given in the monitor's specifications, and signal processing, which is usually the bigger factor. The only way to find that, however, is looking at third-party reviews. If you're playing on a TV, make sure to enable game mode if it has one and disable all post-processing. Post-processing alone can add up to 150 milliseconds of input lag, which is very noticeable. I'll give an example. In this clip I'm turning towards my opponent because the ball bounces out pretty far and I expect him to not be able to make a good shot. He makes a decent shot happen and now I have to do a quick reaction to go up and save the ball. In this footage I superimpose the ball 150 milliseconds ahead of the rest. This is to show where the ball would actually be compared to what you're currently seeing with 150 millisecond input lag. This is the frame where the ball was hit in my gameplay. As you can see, with this amount of input lag, the ball would end up flying over my head. Some people try to make the argument that the human reaction time is 200 milliseconds anyways, so it doesn't matter, but that is a very misleading statement. If you have 150 milliseconds of input lag, you will get that on top of your reaction time, so your action happens 350 milliseconds after the event you reacted to, instead of 200 milliseconds. This was an obvious one, but there are some examples where even small amounts of input lag can make a difference. In this clip my opponent barely didn't get to the ball in time, and I was able to tie the game at 0 seconds. Here I chose to make one layer with 50% transparency to visualize the difference in input lag you will get between 60 and 250 FPS. If he arrived a tiny bit earlier, he probably would have hit the ball and taken the win. How does higher FPS reduce input lag? Take a look at this graphic. When you calculate 60 frames a second, you generate a new image every 17 milliseconds. Because of that, a frame is using inputs that are at least 17 milliseconds old. If you had 250 FPS, you would get a new image every 4 milliseconds. In one 60Hz monitor refresh cycle, there will be up to 4 new frames ready. Some may be wasted, but the newest one will never be 17 milliseconds old. This doesn't even tell the whole story, but more about that later. Now input lag is one thing, but there is another reason to have more FPS than your monitor is capable of. This one has to do with how Rocket League handles input. Similar to pulling a controller, the game only checks your inputs once per frame. At low frame rates that can cause a lot of unintended backflips. For example, at 60 FPS you can center your analog stick and then 50 milliseconds later hit your jump button and there is a chance that you will end up flipping because one frame lasts 17 milliseconds. In some fighting games that run at 60 FPS, players have to be able to hit an exact frame to pull off a combo, so I don't think it is ridiculous to suggest that the same happens in high level Rocket League. 
When you go for a fast aerial, you want to pull your car back as fast as possible to gain the most out of your boost. Now if you screw up your timing a tiny bit and the jump gets pressed in a frame where the analog stick doesn't get registered as centered even though it was when you jumped, you end up doing an unnecessary flip. Using a macro with 10 milliseconds delay, the theory lines up perfectly with reality. However, when I shot the time, I ended up noticing that there seem to be some other factors that are causing unintended flips even if the FPS are high enough. That's when I started collecting a lot of data. A lot, a lot of data. Sadly, even with all that data, I am not able to understand it perfectly, but the gist of the story is that higher FPS usually means less fields backflip man moments. Except at 200 FPS, there seems to be some voodoo magic going on, causing more flips than at 150 FPS. So either go straight for 250 or stay at 150. The spreadsheet is in the video description if you want to take a look at the data yourself. Now that we talked of what input lag is and what it does, it's time to talk about what you can do against it. An optimal low input lag setup would have a wired input device with a high polling rate, a powerful computer, FPS slider set to max, VSync off, and a monitor with a high refresh rate and minimal signal processing and pixel response time. This is obviously very expensive, so watch till the end where I'll discuss what is worth it and what is not. If you already have powerful hardware, there are two additional changes you can do to lower the input lag even further. The first one is unlocking the frame rate. Doing this will get you beyond the 250 FPS limit if your PC can handle it. To do this, go to your documents folder, my games, Rocket League, TA game, config, and open up TA system settings.ini. Search for allow per frame sleep and change the value to false. Save the file and restart Rocket League. The other setting is called one frame thread lag and is located in the same file but should be used with caution. The engine usually uses a technique known as pipelining. This means that while the GPU is still working on one frame, the CPU will already work on the next. This way the CPU and GPU can both work almost 100% of the time, giving you the most performance. However, it will also mean that the CPU will be processing the inputs one frame ahead of the GPU, introducing input lag of up to one frame. If you turn this off, you will lose a significant amount of performance because the CPU and GPU have to share one time frame to get all the work done. If you can't keep at least 150 FPS with one frame thread lag faults, turn it back on again. I tried all of this myself, using a 1000Hz polling rate keyboard, having 1000 FPS by staring into a wall, and using a monitor that was tested to have 12.7 milliseconds of input lag. I then used the slow motion video function on my iPhone, measuring a total input lag of about 21 milliseconds. Keep in mind that this is not highly accurate, as I was only able to take a 120 FPS video, making one frame a difference of 8 milliseconds. But the results are pretty close to what you would expect. One millisecond for the keyboard, plus one millisecond of calculating the frame, and then another 12.7 milliseconds for the monitor lag. We have 6 milliseconds remaining, and at 144Hz it takes around 7 milliseconds to transmit a whole frame. This also shows that there is no kind of special input lag added by the game, which some people were claiming after the Season 3 patch. I've obviously just tested this on my system and don't want to discredit any players that have claimed that they have high input lag, but Psyonix certainly didn't just patch it in. So now, is it all worth it? Should you go out and get a brand new Titan X and a monitor with 3 milliseconds of input lag, set the graphics to its lowest, unlock your FPS and play at 1000 FPS with only around 10 milliseconds of total input lag? Well, I'm certainly not gonna stop you, but it's important to stay real here. I don't know if you can feel a difference in input lag, but I can tell you about an experiment I did to see if I could feel the difference between 144 FPS and 250 FPS on my 144Hz monitor. Before I tested, I was pretty sure that I could tell the difference, which is up to 6 milliseconds with one frame thread lag enabled. 
I had a friend roll truly random numbers on random.org and set the FPS to either 250 or 144. I would then get in the room and play a bit, writing down what I thought the FPS counter was set to. After 5 iterations we decided to share the results for the first time. And we stopped right there, as I only got 1 out of 5 right. Not only that, but the one time I was sure it was way more responsive than the last time I played, it was actually 144 FPS twice in a row. Try to do this experiment yourself, before you end up investing unnecessary amounts of money into expensive equipment. The thing I can heavily recommend are 144Hz monitors in general. Not only will they have lower worst case input lag, but they will also show a smoother motion which makes tracking fast objects easier on the eyes. As long as you have that and a PC capable of constant 144 FPS, there is absolutely nothing stopping you from being the best player in the world. That is not to say that players that play at 60 FPS on a 60Hz monitor can't compete, but it's definitely a bit harder. Alright, that's more than enough for this topic. Go follow my Twitter at halfwaydeadrl. I'm going to make a poll there for the topic of the next video. If you have any more questions regarding this video, please leave them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them.